This is a clock made by Joseph Nibb in London in about 1682. And Joseph Nibb came from Oxford, first of all, down to London when his cousin Samuel Nibb died. He took over Samuel's workshop and then started his own style. And I think Nibb's style um, is not quite as opulent and his clientele weren't so uh, wealthy as Tompion, who were uh, the Tompion and Nib were contemporaries. But Tompion had a royal following of the kings, the queens, um, royalty, whereas Nib was much more to the lower end of uh, the society, to the squires, to the uh, small lords, and yet it's a beautiful clock. It's a beautiful dial here with a skeletonized chapter ring. You can see how the, each of the Roman numerals has been cut out and is done separately. And then the little half hour markers are just filed out to give the, the beautiful matting coming through to emphasize the Roman numerals and the dial itself. It, it's different, it's beautiful, and it's typical of a Nib feature, of a Joseph Nib feature. Nib also made a feature of his hands. Look at the lovely scalloping in the hour hand and the simple minute hand to go with it. Just quality, not opulence, just plain, simple quality. Again, look at the quality of the casting of the spandrel here. The detail which has then been chased in into the wings and the lovely smiling cherub. Beautiful carrying handle here with the garland round the wheat ears, as it's called, and then the trunnions coming through plain mounts with uh, plain washers underneath. Wonderful detailed floral castings with these uh, branching flowers, a uh, little rose in the center, a uh, big flower up the top, a beautiful casting, carefully chased, and then gold gilded with mercury. And the lovely little cherub's head in the center of the sound of fret with the red silk behind, letting the sound out from the two bells. Four small finials on each of the corners of the clock Flaming urns, but look at the detail in the, in the flowers around the, the base and the flames at the top. The detail that's come into the feathers here that's been chased in after the casting for a keyhole escutcheon isn't quite so beautiful because the poor cherub has had the keyhole cut right through his little face. The last feature I would like to bring to your attention are the lovely little gilded squashed bun feet. Uh, gilded brass and just set off the clock uh, as a quality item. So the main feature of this clock, it's called double six striking. Normally, if you wake up in the night, um, you have a vague idea what the time is, so that um, it's in the middle of the night and you want to know what the time is. Um, and you listen and the clock ticks on and then it strikes. Quarter past, quarter past three. So when you get to about the time you start waking up, then quarter past six, half past six, Perfectly clear, half past six. Three quarters past six. So what's it gonna strike now? You'd think it would strike seven, wouldn't you? It would go four bings and seven bongs. done the four bings, but only one bong. 
because it's double six striking. It starts again here and will strike one, two, three, four, five, six. And that just saves energy. So when we come to quarter past, it'll do one bing for quarter past and it will do uh, one bing for seven o'clock. <laughs> Confusing, isn't it? And again, half past seven. Three quarters past seven. Now when we come to eight o'clock, it'll do the four bings and two bongs because it's two hours after six. <laughs> so why did Nib come up with this system? Well, basically, it saves money great saving of energy and so the spring is less expensive and you've got a unique sales feature it's double six striking not only did nib have the double six on the front of course he has to have it on the count wheels at the back and they're all interlocked and so you cannot have a, a repeat you can't have a piece of string at night which you pull um, because it's the old-fashioned count wheel system and once it's struck a particular hour then the next time it will move on so that it would get out completely out of phase if you had a quarter repeat so that a clock like this is the end of the sophisticated count wheel system just before the repeat of the snail system and the rack came in Here's the quarter strike and here's the hour strike and you can see the lever in between so that as soon as the quarter is finished it trips off and lets the hour strike. So the two are interlocked. So on the quarter count wheel you've got a series of pins. You can just see them here and they set off on the trip lever here going across the, after the quarter is struck, it lifts and sets off the hour. Half past eight coming up. Ding, ding, dong, dong. That, believe it or not, is half past eight. And when it gets out of phase, it's quite difficult to get it back in again. So you very sensible if you wind a nib clock so that the, it runs out of the pendulum before it runs out of the quarters and the hours. Any nib clock always has the most beautiful engraving and isn't that a wonderful back plate with the flowers, the swirls and it's even engraved to fit in with the, 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 the wheels and the ends of the arbors coming through the back. So towards the bottom of the back plate, you've got the lovely signature here of Joseph Nib Londini Fake It. It's not deep, bold engraving, it's quite shallow, and yet it's got a lovely flowing style to the engraving, which fits in with all the flowers surrounding it. So what a beautiful pair of flowers to the bottom of the back plate this wonderful swirl across and then the curve round and the detail within the flower itself. And just below the quarter count wheel you've got another pair of uh, lovely flowers. The, the bell of the flower with the curl of the base coming round and joining up with the one on the opposite side underneath the hour count wheel. There we are. I hope you'll agree with me that this Joseph Nib it's a beautiful, somewhat quirky mantle clock. And I leave you with it about to strike 11 o'clock. And that will be four bings for the hour and five bongs for 11.
Beautiful.